So, yeah, here we are in the time of Corona. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you, with technology, we're able to turn, you know, a problem not being able to sit with Mikkel and into an opportunity is uh, I feel like I'm with you, Mikkel, right now. What a gorgeous background. Uh, for listeners, uh, let us know where you are and, and what's over your right and left shoulder. Well, I'm sitting in our backyard in Norway, and it's a, a nice backyard, as you can see, is a river and forest behind me, and it's uh, just a little bit of a cloudy day, but mostly beautiful. Yeah, yeah, fabulous. How long have you been in Norway now? Oof. Well, this has been a strange year, Glenn. <laughs> um, normally, we spend summers here, uh, but I couldn't even leave San Francisco until July. All the airlines were, were shut down or not flying. So we've only been here since July. Mm -hmm. and where a typical summer is all, all summer in Norway for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful place to be in the summer. I, I can imagine. Uh, you know, I'm on the, in the north, uh, in northern Minnesota for the last 25 years, well, 30 years. Uh, you know, we would uh, bring our two boys and come up north and, uh, and spend time at our island cabin. So, you know, we're kindred spirits in that. It's really a special thing to be in nature especially in summer with the long days and, and beautiful mm. nights. And, and so I, I, I feel it. And so mm. summer's waning, but still warm, right? Yeah, it's waning. Yeah. yeah, you can feel it going fast now. Yes, yes. And, and uh, it's also been a strange year for, uh, you know, beyond the obvious reasons. You, you had uh, some surgery. How, how are you feeling and, and what happened? I know it's not a, no, a noble incident, <laughs> right? But go ahead. Tell, tell us how you're doing. No, I'm great. I'm great. I just, I did a stupid thing. Uh, it's really dangerous to stay at home, I found. I, I travel a lot, as you know, Glenn, and staying at home over a period of time, it's not a good idea. I fell down some stairs and broke my leg. Right. And <laughs> it's yeah, just, awful. that was back in June, but now I'm, I'm, I'm almost as good as new now. So yeah, I had a great, great surgeon who did a really good repair job and, uh, yeah, I'm okay now. It's just, it's a, like I said, it's a weird year. I, I hear you. Yeah. So in the world of Mikkel, he could travel the world and, and be healthy, healthy as can be, but put him at home and he's going to find a way to in, injure himself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, was, uh, was sauna involved in any of your healing and, and um, you know, with hot and cold, did it, were you partaking in sauna? Did you notice anything about um, how you got well and, and what, what, oh, maybe what was your protocol? That's a great question, Glenn. You know, at first it was very frustrating because I have a big heavy cast on uh, for the first month or six weeks. And I couldn't, you know, I had to take, um, uh, what do you call it, you know, uh, Sponge shower, bath. Shower, towel baths. <laughs> There's, there's another name for it, but I won't. Yeah. Say uh, uh, we say sponge bath. A sponge okay, bath. Sponge bath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a sponge yeah. bath. So that was very frustrating. But when that cast came off and I was able to take hot baths and alternate that with cold, I felt there was a huge change, at least in my psychological state. Now, we've, or I think we've talked about this, but I don't have a sauna in San Francisco. I don't have my own sauna. Um, I'm a really big public bath guy, you know that. And um, all the public baths closed down well, all over the world. And that caught me off guard because I had hardly any way to do a good sweat. Um, and for your special sauna day, I, <laughs> which was great, by the way, it was a great idea and very successful. I actually put together a, a portable, what I call trail sweat in my backyard and heated up the Weber and fired up some rocks. Okay, it was a lot of work for a little bit of sweat. So it wasn't until I got here back in, in Norway, where we have a really beautifully newly renovated sauna in our, in our backyard here, that I was able to explore the heat and the cold. And I, well, I, you know, I swear by it. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the most healthy things you can do um, is alternate heat and cold. And I'm sure my, the reason I'm, well, I'm not dancing, but I'm, I'm walking five miles a day. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons I think is because I have this, this great tool in my, you know, at my fingertip, which is heat and cold. 
Beautiful. <clears throat> what percent were you, was, was your um, leg back to normal when you first started to sauna um, in, in Norway? Like, were you well on the mend or, or soon your calf, cast thereafter? Or well, I had to get the cast. Once, once the cast was off, uh, you know, I could, I could limp around. Um, mm. So I was, I was in the limping around stage when I jumped in my sauna here. Oh, and I, I, the reason why I ask is, uh, again, a lot of this is intuitive. I mean, I'm not going to go break my leg to experience uh, how well <laughs> one can heal with hot and cold. But just intuitively speaking, I mean, there's times where, like, I'll come off a mountain bike ride and, and, and have, you know, twisted a knee or, you know, done some whatever. And it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing the, the incremental healing uh, aspect. It, it sort of puts, much like with a cold, like, you know, when I'm feeling a cold coming on, you know, that people say, oh, does, does uh, the sauna cure your cold? And I, I'll say, well, you know, first of all, if I'm feeling a cold coming on when I go sauna, it almost seems like it puts it in warp speed. Like I, I can blow through whatever intention that cold had and, and get it done in a matter of hours instead of days or even a week. So it mm -hmm. seems like it, it, for me anyway, a lot of this is sort of warp speed healing. Um, can you relate? And that, is that how your leg kind of felt? Uh, totally. And it's not only that, it, so much of healing is a state of mind, as you know. And with me, if I don't have regular sweats, uh, I'm, I can get depressed pretty easy. I, and a lot of, you, know, you can explain it scientifically through the uh, endorphins that are created when your body's under the heat stress. Um, so for me, feeling better and, and knowing that I'm uh, you know, that, that I'm doing something good for my body. But more than that, it's just I feel better. Yeah. I'm sure that contributes a lot to healing and, mm -hmm. and moving things along. Beautiful. There, are other, there are other things, of course, as you know, physiologically, your, you know, your body is um, mm -hmm. uh, reacting to the heat, so your circulation is increased. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of things that are going on physiologically that we can explain. But I think at the end of the day, feeling good and being happy you know, there's nothing like it. Yeah, beautiful. Well said. So when you take your five mile walk, um, do you have the sauna stove on idle, like coming up to temp? <laughs> or is that like, tell us your normal, you know, your sauna routine, like these days in Norway, uh, and, and it, as it involves your exercise and time of day, and just kind of roll it out, like what a typical day in the life of Mikkel and sauna looks like. Boy, you're the man to talk to about this. Uh, yeah, no, I have my routine right behind me. There's a wonderful trail. Uh, that goes all along the river. So I, I do my walk beforehand. Of course, I fire up the, uh, I have a Harvey electric stove. Uh, we used to have a wood burning stove here and I love wood burning stoves, but the building that we put the sauna in is a really old building. And it, I, it's just, the sound is just part of the building. And I, I just don't want to burn down the building. Mm. I've seen in Finland too many buildings have burned down because of wood burning stoves. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we have an electric stove which allows us to, um, you can um, set a timer and it'll fire up. So it'll be hot by the time you, you get back. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to use uh, and it works really well. Beautiful. Yeah, I can relate to that. There's something just um, <clears throat> very flowy about exercise than sauna. Um, and and I, what I notice, like whether it's in Minneapolis or up at our island cabin, is uh, it just seems to be like peanut butter and jelly, you know, or just one of these naturally two things going together so well. And, and especially, and, and you know, the weather's been so great, and I'm sure in Norway too. But I don't know about you, but do you, do you like myself, do you look forward to kind of a crappy day when you're maybe <laughs> hiking out there and you come back drenched and kind of chilled, knowing you have a sauna ready for you? Yeah, of course. I mean, we, you know, winter coming, you can feel it right now too. Right, right. Uh, and yeah, I've got the sauna going. Um, sure, the minute I see any kind oh. of you know, dip in the temperature and clouds, yeah. fire that yeah. sucker up. But you know, I like it. Most people don't understand this, but on a really hot day, mm -hmm. I like the sauna too. I'm yeah. a, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I believe it goes, it, it, it works uh, to keep you cool mm -hmm. in the heat and warm you up in the cold. It's, right on, uh, man. Well said. Anyway. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, can we talk, uh, shifting gears a little bit, I want to talk about the SALT project. Um, and, mm. how, uh, and I also, we're going to lead into um, the series too. I mean, that's kind of the main thing. And if it's okay, I'll let you take the order of it. Uh, you know, maybe for listeners, we're going to dive into these two topics. Which one do you want to talk first? 
Well, there everything everything is interconnected. We can talk about the towels. I just are you called the salt project? I just uh, uh, pulled that down, so that's really mm -hmm. fresh Good. in my mind right Please. now. Please, yeah, tell listeners oh. like kind of really the chronology of that. You know, just from an, what is salt, the idea of it, and then the as this thing flowed, if if you could. Brilliant. So SALT is a, it's in Oslo, Norway, and it's a uh, art project, a giant art project that uh, went up oh, several years ago in an empty lot right near the um, Opera House, which is a beautiful location. And what it came down from the north where it originated. And one of the things that they do up north is they have these uh, salt drying racks that are shaped like pyramids. And that became kind of the defining uh, symbol or image for this art project. They built this huge, uh, huge, huge uh, pyramid, a fish drying rack. Right. And, and, and just, uh, to, just to interject, it's an icon of Norway, these, uh, these racks, these drying racks for cod. Um, I just right. had to throw that in there. Very oh, yeah. iconic. Oh, yeah. The, the dry cod. Sure. Uh, so, so anyway, so I was visiting them. They also built a bunch of um, batstu, as it's called in Norwegian, batstu, which is the Norwegian word for sauna, or the Norwegian name for the sweat bath. And they had built several public batstus on this uh, art project, um, uh, this location, and they were really popular. Uh, and I was walking there to, we were filming there actually, we were doing the series, uh, the Perfect Sweat series, and I walked by that pyramid and I just can only, I could just imagine covering the thing with, with, um, <laughs> with used towels mm -hmm. uh, from all over the world. And I thought, what a great way to, to, uh, to uh, you know, talk about salt, because obviously sweat is mostly salt and water. Uh, and also just uh, the, the idea of, um, well, you know, bringing all these, the, this energy, this healing wellness energy from people, um, from Japan to Turkey to Minneapolis to Mexico, and put them all kind of in this in this form, this uh, this drying rack form, and then I found this great technique where you can print photographs on towels. It's a German company that does it. So I combined the the towels that were um, collected, and thank you by the way for your help collecting them. Uh, bathers uh, sweat on the towels. I know that sounds. Yeah, pre-corona. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Post-corona doesn't sound so right. good. But anyway, we, so sweat is pretty clean, by the way. You know, hmm. But we don't have to go into that. No, that's uh, true. But keep going. It yeah. is. You don't pass disease through sweat. But yeah. anyway, so people use the towels and they, they either wrote their name on them or they were draw, drew some art on them. So these really became kind of objects that were combined with my own photographs that were printed on towels. And these were hung on this fish drying rack in February. And this is pre-corona. And uh, well, I was just starting then. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was just uh, so beautiful to see all these 500 towels hanging on this giant rack. Uh, we had a big opening ceremony and uh, it was, it was uh, really well received. And then, as you know, uh, things, the world changed in February, <laughs> middle end of February. And um, yeah, so, yeah. so Norway salt, shut down. Right, Norway shut down salt, yeah. uh, which could you say that then that salt is a uh, public sauna uh, destination? Is that, or there, I know there's more to it. There's stages and this and that, but sauna is a big part of, of the, the installation or the place right? sure it's an art installation in that there's they have concerts there they show movies there's food um there's lectures and there's at least two or three public baths uh -huh. that are a really big part of the of the installation yeah. that are open to the public and very popular and they shut down um every everything shut down so the towels were there and um you know they I, I'm happy. I'm happy they were there. I'm just. I kind of wish more people could have gotten into Norway because Norway shut its borders down too. Right. Exactly. And nobody was even allowed in. So a lot of Norwegians saw those towels, but mm -hmm. not well, that many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a, a, a beautiful and metaphorical and on a lot of levels. And I don't need to share or state some of the obvious, but just to bring these. You know, it's a unifying thing. You know, and I often say, you know, heat is 
heat and cold is so uh, egalitarian. You know, it doesn't matter what country you are, or even what method of sweat bathing you're you're undertaking. And I think you know, if I could just project a little bit of that, uh, the towel project. Um, what a cool thing! I mean, towels from all over the world expressing the 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 egalitarian nature of of what you and I love so much. And the essence, the the the, the it was important to me that the, these were used towels, and I. I know that sounds, again, maybe a little strange, but it was really important. There was an essence that was in, contained in every one of those towels, not only the, the signature of the user or maybe some artwork, but on some other level, there's an essence of someone there as, as well. So we took down the exhibit or took down the towels last week, uh, and I've, I've got them all bundled up, and they're... Um, I keep thinking there's, you know, there's got to be another venue someplace around the world that these towels can appear in. So we'll just wait for chapter two on that one. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, let's, a perfect sweat. Um, if, if for, uh, I could summarize it, but I'd love to hear it from you. Uh, the chronology dating back to uh, <clears throat> this common bond that you and I have also about traveling around the world as a, as a young call it college student, if you could take listeners um, quickly through or, or just succinctly through the brand, I mean, I, for lack of a better <laughs> word, your, your history behind this from the, from the book and leading up to the series. It, w w I hope you, you don't mind, but we'd love to hear it from you. No, that's fine. That's fine, Glenn. It's, um, it is kind of a, it's a fairy tale in some ways. Um, when I was young, and that was a while ago now, back in the 70s, uh, I spent three years traveling all over, over the world in search of sweat bathing. And um, I think I'm the first one that kind of connected the dots uh, that uh, mm -hmm. this this idea of, of sitting in a hot room and, and producing sweat uh, was universal. It wasn't just something that happened in Finland or in Turkey or Russia. It happens in Japan, it happens with Native Americans, it happens with, in Mexico, with the Aztecs and the Mayans. And in fact, it seems to be kind of a universal human phenomena to subject your body to heat and, and produce sweat. So I wrote this book, it was aptly called Sweat, and it came out in 78, right before the AIDS epidemic. So I'm familiar with what happens with epidemics and my, my projects. Um, and uh, it, it, it went on and kind of went out into the world. Uh, in those days, it was different. Things didn't get out in the world the same way they do now. So, but it, it was a book and it contained all these ideas and all these places that I had visited and it kind of grew legs and mm -hmm. became evergreen. And uh, many, many, many years later, I got an email from a producer in Seattle saying he'd like to turn the, what I did for sweat into a TV series. So for the last, well, three or four years now, we've been recreating my, my journey around the world and going back and revisiting these places from Finland to Russia, to Turkey, to Japan, and doing episodes um, on each one of those cultures. Beautiful. And right now, just to kind of bring you up to date, we have uh, seven episodes that we've shot that are in the can, they're being, uh, they're in post-production. We had a couple more that we were all set to work on in uh, this spring and early summer. And we just, we went to a full stop on that as everything did. I mean, we just stopped. And um, right now the series is in post-production. We don't have a, a definite distributor and that, that, that frustrates me, but I have to, I have to accept that these times are different, difficult right now. <laughs> yes. I, it's different. It's a different time. And I, I like to think that we'll, we'll get back to normal. We'll no, get, no question. And, and, and when it does, get, we'll, you know, we'll get that show out there and Beautiful. make it available. Great. Thank, thank you for that update. Um, <clears throat> so the, the series, um, as you traveled around to these six different uh, countries, uh, sweat bathing cultures, did you notice any change? Uh, uh, you know the, the the circularity of this uh, being a you know in your uh, in the 1970s, you know decades um, have changed. Anything different? I mean, I'm sure the world is completely different. I mean, people probably you know with their iPhones between you know cool in cool downs you know maybe or whatever. I mean, there's some there, there's some 
technological differences, I'm sure. But what did you notice that was different in some of these uh, cultures from a sweat bathing perspective? Um, or, well, you know, maybe it'd even be better if there was nothing different. Uh, uh, does anything come to mind as things being different? Oh, oh, there's a huge difference. Back, back in the 70s, it was like a, like a really thin soup. In other words, there was... Uh, Finland, of course, it was, the sound has always been popular. But, but even in Finland, there were there were public baths were were closing. Um, the bath itself was was always part of the culture. But there was a there wasn't a passion. And, and the, what I guess what I'm trying to say is what I found now, all these years later, 45 years later, is a is a kind of a rekindled rekindled passion, because I think. There's a time bathing is, is cyclical. There's times when bathing uh, is, is popular, uh, and there's times when it's not. Uh, and back in the 70s, it was like a thin soup. It was there, the flavor was there, but not the. Ro it wasn't robust, and it wasn't uh, strong and powerful. And now, it, it, in the in the 21st century, I I don't know how to describe it other than it's just phenomenal interest in this type of bathing all over the world. Um, it, even in Japan, was a, which is a, is a big bathing culture, it always has been, but now the passion for the, for the Finnish sauna in Japan is just over the top. Uh, yep. It's just phenomenal what, with the young people. It's mostly young people mm -hmm. that are carrying this torch, but uh, I'm blown away by, by how passionate people are for, for bathing now. Mm. And I didn't see that in the 70s. I bet, yes. And I love the metaphor of thin soup versus, call it rich soup, maybe, like a, today is a rich soup. The, the right. other overlying element, too, is this, <clears throat> um, uh, this, this I, I love how, how innovation can happen, call this innovation, the, you know, in se seemingly in separate countries or separate cultures, but this sort of commonality to it. Um, and there, there's, there's no better, well, I have two examples, you know, sure, like I call it sauna in the public domain. I mean, this idea of uh, I, uh, butts on the bench, you know, like uh, go to a website, $25, 25 euros, uh, and these, these entrepreneurial pop-up um, uh, uh, visions, um, enterprises. Um, here in America, to see these being popping up, it, the metaphor for me is the craft brewing industry, where sure, it started in the Northwest in Seattle and stuff, but once people tasted good, good beer uh, or, or felt the culture of a brew pub or whatever, it, it, in North America specifically, it seems to have really um, uh, 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 kind of just blown up, for lack of a better word, um, mm -hmm. independently. And, and people creating really cool vibes, like good heats, good experiences, and something that's very dear to you, Mikkel, is like the idea of a, of a social gathering. Mm. So, I mean, I, I haven't felt this around the world, like you had the, you know, good fortune of revisiting, but I've sure uh, felt it here just in my mm -hmm. own country of America. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I think, I think we're really longing for authentic experiences. We're longing for social experiences that have some kind of meaning other than just, you know, drinking or whatever, um, partying or uh, superficial things. I think, I think the bath, People recognize that there's many levels to it. I just think that it's a time. It's and you know it's a stressful time. Uh, and and now with the coronavirus, we know that we know that underlying health conditions are one of the first things you watch out for in terms of vulnerability to the virus. Mm -hmm. So I think people, it's kind of it was already there before, but I think it's going to even be more so that people are really concerned about about their health. Yeah. Um, yeah. All these things, we're just we're reaching kind of a tipping point in, in of what we can handle in terms of uh, being out of balance and the world being out of balance and the stresses that people are feeling. And when we come down, when it comes down to it, and you've heard me say this before, and I keep saying it, I, I find very few human activities that under one roof satisfy the social, the spiritual, and and the um, and, and the physical. Mm -hmm. in, under one roof to be able to have this powerful powerful thing happen with, under with those three categories and, and i yes I, 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 to do that right and i <clears throat> i remember us you know chatting on that and 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 you have been racking your brain and and reaching for parallels is it is it still only one in your mind like the idea of uh <laughs> of sharing down at a at a dinner table and communing yeah. 
in that sense, or have you have you reached another example, or are we still in a company of one, like no, uh, getting together? There's a, there's a couple of things people have brought up: eating, as you said, uh, also sports. Sometimes people mm -hmm. bring up sports, but that can be selective and who can do what, and, you know, so. Yeah, well, but, if I could just riff on that one, sports is, watching sports is passive. So that I would, I would cancel that off the list where dining together is active and right. you know, sauna or sweating together is an active thing. But if you're engaging in sports together, yeah, I, I think there's a dyna dynamic yeah. there. That's, yeah. and, and we'd like to kind of maybe find a few of these, a collection of a few of these where, uh, uh, all, all the dynamics are, are being realized. And, and sports is a good one too. Like when you think about volleyball, like some, sometimes you, you get together and, and you know, these, these clubs or whatever, and, and you don't know who your teammates are going to be. And that's much like the public yeah. sweat experience. You don't know really who it's a mashup of who's in the, on the, in the bench at the same time and who's cooling down and who, who you run into kind of a thing. So it's a randomness right. element. Yeah, sports is a little more complicated, but you know, remember, Glenn, that you know when you have when when you have a hammer in your hand, everything looks like a nail, uh, and, and I'm I am definitely sweat centric. So, right on, man. I, 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 have to, I have that's full disclosure on my part. I, that's how I see it. I see it everywhere and in everything, yeah. and uh, I well, can't you, help myself. Well, man, I I'm with you, and this is what's so beautiful about this. Uh, I guess you could call it a community. I, I know many listening are in that same camp. Um, I, I, I'm the same way. And, and I, I don't try to do it. I mean, I find myself, you know, I've been taking solo saunas quite a bit, you know, since the time of Corona. <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes you catch yourself, where, where's your mind at that moment? And, mm -hmm. and my mind so often drifts over to sauna, like mm -hmm. sauna building, you know, sauna activation, you know, so should I move the bench over here? Oh, this is so great. I should write a post about how great the cold is with the heat. <laughs> and all this, all this. I just like, Am I insane? <laughs> I mean, everything is a nail. Everything is a nail. I hear, I can totally relate. <laughs> well, well said. Um, okay, so, so um, let's talk about, uh, you know, the, call it the, the big nail, the, the, uh, the big nail in the big room, hammer. if you will. The biggest hammer or whatever. This, this time we're living. Um, can you share a little bit more? You touched on it about you. You've lived this before the AIDS epidemic. Um, oh. Can you share for especially those younger listening, like to, you know, perhaps some thirty-year-old has invested, literally his his you know his career into maybe he or she into building a sauna and you know a website and looking to bring their community together and bringing this mobile sauna to say brew pubs and stuff and they're they're pulling their hair out and they you know these are younger people that don't have a perspective or a comparative um, um, uh, p a pandemic in history, but you, you so succinctly bring up the AIDS epidemic. You were young, the book Sweat had just come out. I'm, there's no specific question here, but you know where I'm going. Can you speak yeah, to this Yeah, I, I got you. I can definitely riff off that. Um, I, many times over the years, people have come to me wanting to make public saunas or m mobile saunas or, or Turkish baths or, you know, I. I kind of given given advice over many years uh, to many people and I always always say one of the things you have to watch out for is a pandemic or epidemic it will come and it will affect your business I always tell people that and I say that shouldn't stop you uh, because historically this, this has been going on as long as probably as long as recorded history but certainly the Roman times uh, uh, the baths were periodically closed down because of cholera or other uh, outbreaks of disease, but they always come back. And I think I think we had a conversation once, Glenn, and, and I said, well, you know, Disneyland's going to come back too. <laughs> we're going to go back to Disneyland, um, and we are going to we're going to go back to restaurants, and we are going to go back to offices. You know, even though people talk about you know work at home, people want to be with each other. People want. Uh, social connections. It's, it's, we're hardwired. That's who we are. Um, disease and, has been around as long as you know we've been around as a species. So um, this is going to happen. And one of the things, if you're if you're doing a business, uh, you you just have to make a 
plan. You have to have that in your mind. And, uh, you know, there's, there's things you can do. Like there, there are people that are pivoting all the time. I was mentioning salt. Salt closed down in Oslo. They had to. They were shut down. But what did they do during that time? I was just shocked when I went back uh, a few weeks ago. They had totally renovated the place. They had, they had uh, improved the saunas, the, the bustus. They had done some work there. Uh, they had used that time to, 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 to make everything so much nicer. And they've also built in social distancing, too. That was part of the, the renovation projects. So these are people that didn't panic or freeze or anything to that, which I can understand that, too. You know, <laughs> there is that moment when you go, oh, God, it's all over. The world is it's over. Forget it. I'm done. But you don't have to do that. Um, in terms of business, I, there's, I, I've, I've said this before, during some of the... Um, um, I think it was in the Middle Ages, the the baths that were shut down turned into bakeries because they had the ovens. Uh, they pivoted. And, of course, they were sued by the bakers' union because they didn't appreciate these upstart bathhouses getting into their business. Um, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen again. And we need to we need to understand that. Now, what I've thought, when this happened and I was in San Francisco without a sauna was I got to get a, I got to get a private sauna. In my right. I know. And I'm the guy that's always saying, forget making your own, making mm -hmm. your own private sauna, get the public saunas. Well, now I'm the guy that says do both. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Cause I, I, I was desperate without yeah. a sauna. Amen. I was desperate. It was really bad. I get and, it. And I kept thinking, okay, well, next time I'm going to be more prepared. Yeah, I, I, I hear it. So this is, uh, this is a parallel for you. I mean, um, the book comes out, Sweat, and then the AIDS, AIDS pandemic. And then yeah. the, the series gets uh, the, the, the perfect sweat. The, you know, the, the series gets halted by uh, Corona. So you, you're jinxed. It's my fault. It's all my fault. <laughs> That's right. You did it to us, Mikkel. But, uh, the, you know, the, we need this perspective. And, I, and people, you know, quite seriously on this one, people really uh, I, I appreciate you making that connection because uh, younger people don't have the history of time and haven't seen this. Um, and there is a direct parallel. I mean, I remember AIDS when the AIDS thing was at its height. Uh, all, I remember hot tubs specifically, you know, that yep. it just shut, shut down. It was more of a hot tub thing because sauna really wasn't as, uh, we know sauna Shit. now. It was but, coming. It was coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. But it was hot tubs overnight. They were even removed from um, YMCAs and stuff, right? Oh, absolutely. The 70s was, uh, in fact, my publisher of the sweat book was, who wrote, had the, he published the first hot tubs book mm. that's been credited with starting that craze in the 70s. Uh, yeah, the hot tub, we, my swimming pool, my swimming hall, the public bath that I used to swim at, shut down because uh, the lifeguard had got AIDS and died literally within a few days. And at that time, we didn't know what the transmission mechanism was for AIDS. We really, we had no idea. We didn't know if we, if we touched somebody, we would get it. And the, the parallels are in, the, in the, it's very similar to what's going on now in that, you know, at the very beginning of the coronavirus, we we're all totally panicked, right? We didn't even know, how, we didn't know the transmission mechanism then. Remember where we think washing your hands is really important, but now we know it's mostly respiratory, it comes through the spraying and saliva. Uh, it's very hard to get it through contact. Uh, anyway, we know a lot more now. And, and I think as we know more, we're going to get smarter and smarter and smarter. And that's what happened with AIDS as well. We just got smarter and smarter and smarter. And um, learn, and that comes with that comes with science, by the way, that comes with facts and knowledge, not rumors and, and right made on. up things. Right on. Yeah, the plug good. For, for that. No, um, well said. And I, and I think what we're going to do now, it, 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 there's there's similarities to the AIDS crisis, but there's also similarities to the to the pandemic of 1918, the so-called Spanish flu, and that's a little bit scarier, because the scary part of that particular time was the second wave, and the second wave uh, came in October, September, October, November, after a spring uh, outbreak. I'm afraid, you know, if we're going to follow that, if we're going to parallel that one, we're we're in for some another rocky 
rocky road in the, in the fall. I hear you. What's and, your what's your plan? Um, are you going to stay in Norway? Do you think you're going to come back? I would stay here, but my wife had to go back last week for she's a teacher, so she has to go back to teach. She tried to teach from here, but the nine hour time difference mm -hmm. killed her. She two in the morning, she just yeah. couldn't do it. Right on. So she's back there, and I just I, I I'm going to probably go back in a few weeks just because, you know, I want to be with my wife. So. Right on. No, I hear you, and it's your life. I mean, San Francisco is as much a part of you as Norway, isn't it? But I'd rather be here right now. <laughs> oh, man, I hear you. I know. This is one of the, you said this is a very unique year, and that's so obvious. But I'll tell you, one of the ways it's kind of unique for me is, so we're on an island. And so uh, the ex, this is actually one of the reasons why Backyard Sauna became such a big deal for me 25 years ago, is that uh, our cabin is on an island. So we have this, what's called the shoulder seasons, where I, I literally can't, couldn't sauna because uh, the ice was either on the way out or on the way in, so no access. And I'm like scratching my head thinking, gosh, I love this sauna so much. So I replicated our cabin sauna in, in my backyard. And I, so I beat that one back. But this time of year, uh, or this year of 2020, um, I got up here a couple of days after the, the ice came out. And I've, uh, I've just been like, you know, because a lot of it's with the George Floyd thing too in our city of Minneapolis, but you know, it's just a pain, it's just layers and layers of difficulty navigating around in a big city uh, with, with these people are afraid, you know, and they're running around and you can feel the energy. But up here in nature, I just feel so blessed uh, and, and, and thankful that, you know, I made this commitment for us and for our family to have nature. Um, so it's much like yourself, you know, this is a time to celebrate nature in our, our ability to not even pivot, but just appreciate it. So when the nights are starting to get colder, I have this thing in the back of my head as much as I love it, is I know kind of it's going to be the end of, uh, of, of cabin life, much like you, much the end of Norway life. But hey, <laughs> first world problem, as they say, right? Yeah. No, I, I feel really lucky that, I, that we have a house here, that we can come here. And Norway, there's, they, they actually have a, there's a, a brain on the shoulder that's uh, the government that's done some really smart things to, to kind of hold back. They have very few cases and right they shut down very, very quickly. And, you know, like I said, there was some intelligence behind the whole thing. We just aren't experiencing so much in America, as you know. Yeah, thank you. Let's talk uh, a little bit about, uh, the, the, let's geek out just for a minute and we can wrap up. If there's anything more you want to say, we can sure talk more. But I, I want to geek out with you a little bit about uh, good heat. You know, the, the perfect sweat, like in search of is, I think, a moniker of yours. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those, it's like the arrow to the bullseye. I mean, it will never, if you only go halfway, it'll never touch. And much like searching for the, the perfect sweat, uh, I think. I'm on your wavelength, that it's an ongoing quest for you. Um, but in the spirit of that, how would you, and I'm putting you on the spot, but how would you define good heat? Like, what does good heat mean to you? Okay, this is, a, this is where I can segue to my, to my renovated sauna that I have here now. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I got really excited when we were shooting one of the episodes in Sweden last summer. And... Uh, we were out in the uh, Swedish archipelago and we were interviewing a, an architect there by the name of Andreas Berenson, Berenson. And he was, I just love the guy. I mean, the guy is just crazy, crazy architect, crazy Swedish architect. And I, I, I challenged him. I said, would you, you know, would you renovate my uh, sauna at, at my house in Norway? And he said, sure, sure. And then I said, well, but this is what I want. And, th and this ties into what you're asking about perfect sweat. And, um, and I said, I'm, I've just come from, well, I've oftentimes taken Native American sweats where there's a, where you're sitting in a kind of a, a, a dome shape, circular, non-rectangular non um, shape. Uh, and there's a whole different feeling when you're in, or in an organic shape like that versus a hard rectangular shape which is very common with the Finnish and or Scandinavian design it, because it makes sense. I mean, it's so much easier to make a rectangular design when you have planks of wood, right? Which are straight. 
Um, and I said, what I want is I have a box, but I want it to feel like a cave. I want you to, to design this thing so that I'm entering it and I feel that I'm in an organic space, non-linear, non-rectangular, non non-linear. So he goes, okay. <laughs> so I kind of went back to the drawing board and came back a few months later with this amazing design that uses stacked studs that, um, I wish I could, if we were, if we were on video, I could literally show it to you. Um, they, it gives this a, a feeling that you're, you're in like a beehive or something by the way that the studs are stacked. They're, they're all stacked together in, in kind of alternating um, heights. And mm -hmm. it, it, it may seem chaotic when I describe it to you, but when you're in it and the way it's designed, your body just naturally fits in all these different compartments. And I have to say, there's something almost perfect about this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I, I have, I'm really happy with the way it came out. The other thing is, because there's so much wood in it, there's so much thermal mass, you know the theory behind the, one of the reasons the smoke sauna, and I'm sure you, your readers or your listeners know what I'm saying when I say the smoke sauna is kind of the Cadillac of all Finnish saunas is this, this the old log cabin with a pile of rocks in it. And people can't figure out or tried to figure out why it feels so good. One of the reasons is because there's so much thermal mass in the logs that when you go in, you're not just getting the heat from one source, not from the rocks or the fire, but you're getting this, this kind of oven-like uh, effect. Uh, and it comes because you have a huge thermal mass. Because he made, uh, because the architect um, designed this with so much wood, this battery of, of uh, these stacked studs, you get almost the same feeling as you get into a smoke sound, as you get when you're in a smoke sound. Are, are, these, are these stacked studs um, <clears throat> uh, bench components or, or, or wall integration or both? They are, the, 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 the benches, the part where you'll sit are, is flat. Uh, so there's not any kind of alternating. Uh, it's the same. The studs are the same used, but but in the wall, but they're coming out of the walls in in different um, uh, 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 3D like. Yes, exactly. And the other benefit of that, <clears throat> call it a benefit, is yes, it increases the thermal mass, um, but it also demasses the the space from a uh, a cube standpoint. There's a lot of sensitivity as we build saunas to. Like okay, yeah. What are the dimensions? That's one thing. But what is the the cube? What is the air? What is the cubic air in a sauna? And and there's a balance that's that's I won't say needed, but desired in that. Where some some spots and you you know to speak to the negative, uh, you and I have been in very terrible saunas like like at health health clubs or whatever that just right. have way too much cubic air relative to you know the key the stove. Uh, the walls and all that. So, so it, it gets very stale like. So I, I got to think part of this concept is to demass the room as well. Yeah, well, you know, that the type of stove, and again, you know, we're getting really, you know, like you say, nerdy about this, but the stove itself makes a huge difference. I happen to have one of the Harvey electric ones that has the, the basket filled with rocks so you don't you know, a huge amount of, what is it, 80 kilos or something? It's a huge mass of rocks. Mm -hmm. So when I go in, I'm not only getting the heat from the walls, but I'm getting the heat from the, well, from the, primarily from the rocks, not from the heating coil or the Correct. heater itself. Yeah. So I think those are all important components that differentiate it from the ones you're talking about. Right on. And also yeah. ventilation. You know, we've yeah. talked about, I mean, ventilation, yeah. ventilation, ventilation. Yeah. You know, to have fresh air in there is, is so important. It's not an air type, <laughs> airtight mm -hmm. box. Right. You know? And that's another totally. reason the old smoke saunas were so nice is they had all these cracks in the walls and, yeah. you know, air would, would come in freely and, and move mm -hmm. around. And um, the, 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 perfection, anyway, the, the perfection from imperfection that we've experienced. We've been yeah. in these older saunas and, and uh, a few of them come to mind and you're like, you know, a sauna builder would just cringe, you know, but the heat is just so um, fabulous it, with the imperfection. Yeah. You know, the other thing, Glenn, that I'm finding as I get older, are you, are you there? I think I'm right here. Yes. Okay. I thought you froze for a second. Um, here's something that maybe your younger viewers won't 
<laughs> necessarily relate to. But when I was young, I remember um, the, <laughs> the Finnish Sound of Society back in the 50s. I, this is when I wasn't even born, but in the early 50s, they used to advocate very high temperatures, like 100, 110, 120. And that was like, whoa, this is what we need. You have to have that. By the time I got to the sauna society in the 70s, they were already older men and they were all saying, well, 80s not bad. Right, that's right, right. <laughs> and, and, and so here I am, you know, getting up in my, my own eight years and I'm, I'm going in the sauna and I like it around 80. And yeah, then, 80s, and, and humid. Totally. And I, like it be, I like it because maybe I have more time to, I don't mm -hmm. know, or well, I take more time. I yes. take more time. Well it's said. more of a sensual experience for me. And this is what I love so much about the Turkish bath, the Turkish sweat bath, the hammam, is that it's luxurious, it's sensuous. It's, it's not like, and sometimes I feel like when I'm up in a hot uh, Scandinavian sauna or bust, it feels a little bit like slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Mm. You know, and, and, and that's, so, you know, okay, that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one way of doing things. But I'm older, and I kind of go, I'm going more for the kind of the deeper, quieter, more sensual experiences. And 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 my bat, my sauna now, my bustu, satisfies that. It, yeah. it really gives me that. Uh, well, it's not, so a couple. I don't couple, run it up to hundred. Right on. No, a couple things to that. Like I, people often ask me, oh, what temperature? What temperature? And and first of all, on that question, it's just so how we are today, where everybody wants an answer like Google it, what is the perfect sauna temp? I need to know the number. And they want that on their thermometer or on their app on their phone and they want to do that for 20 minutes. And then they've had a good sauna round and then they've done four rounds of 20s on push-ups, and, uh, you know, creating this sort of almost, um, you know, regulation to sauna, the process of sauna. So I, I, I don't like that for obvious reasons, but, but I, what I do like, back to your point about, you know, the temperature is it's all about feeling, right? And I say, you know, what the best temperature for sauna is one in which you exit the hot room and your body is completely heated. So for some it's 80, for some it's 90, for some it's 100, but but that's the, that's the essence where you're 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 heated uniformly from from inside out, outside in, and then you then the 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 opposite happens where you cool down. Well, how long is the cool down? Well, I, I think those sort of fairly new to the process, especially as we get toward the fall or whatever. If you're if you're outside and you feel that blast of wind or cool, you're thinking to yourself, "Oh my God, I got to go back in the sauna. That lake was freezing. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that." But it, it again, the opposite here now is we want to be thinking about the core of our body and getting our body completely cooled, uh, at least to neutral, if not colder than neutral. And then, then hitting the hot room again, either upper bench, lower bench, 80, 100. Uh, I find that that is the, is the essence of good sauna for, for me. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. How about how many rounds for you? Or do you count your rounds or do you cycles or do you just kind of roll with how you're feeling? I, I would, I would, I guess I, again, I don't like being rigid about anything, but I, I can't. I don't think I've ever gone less than two. You know, it just seems like that's part of a cycle. I mean, the the hot, the cold, the hot, and then a really slow cool. That's kind of my baseline. Right. On. And then if there's if there's a lot of if there's you know a social thing, a lot of people, and it's going on for a lot longer, then there's more in and out and more more sessions. Um, I have one thing that I have to say, Glenn, you know, now that we're not filming and I've been filming now almost nonstop for three years, mm. I can actually enjoy this. <laughs> I, I mean, oh my God, we yeah. were, we, you know, we, at one point we were filming up in Finland at the uh, mobile, mobile sauna convention mm. or conference or whatever yeah. they call it. Yeah. The festival. I think I did, a, I think I did 50, yeah. 52 saunas in one day. Was, I, I know, brother. I, I, was, I know. No! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's too much. I, yeah. I, and now I can just, I can just take my time now. Yeah, yeah. And, and at your own pace when, you know, when. At my when, own pace. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah. One more thing on how many rounds. And I, I, I do have to rub this in a little bit about wood, wood versus electric. I, oh. let, I often will let the coals decide you know so in other words say yeah. i've done three or four three rounds or whatever yeah. and i'm i come up from the dock and i'm at that point of that wonderful point of equilibrium that you and that you know so well 
And then yeah. I can go either way. In other words, I, I feel so great right now. And then I, yeah. it, you know, with the solo sauna, you're telling, you're asking yourself the question, hmm, should I go for another round? Well, what I've found, Mikhail, is, is more, more times than not, I let the coals decide. I open it up and I say, oh yeah, mm -hmm. there's still plenty of coals left. And then I kind of get like childlike of, of, of euphoria, like, oh, I get to do another one. So I'll, I'll pull the coals <laughs> forward, bring the damper up and kind of blast it out one more time. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's yeah. kind of, it, I guess the moral of that story is it's sort of, sometimes it's nice to work with constraints, you know, yeah, uh, that is yeah. so free flow, you know, our soundness can be so free. No, free I, I think constraints are, are great. I, I just had, my cousin came up to me the other day, he works for the power company here and he said, you know, with all the rain, uh, the electricity is basically free this year. Uh, so, and I said, oh, you shouldn't have told me that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm firing up that sauna every day now. Well, what does <laughs> I mean? Thing? Yeah. But the converse to that would be, would be, you know, it's really expensive. Turn that right. sucker off. Right, right. Yeah, you can only have two rounds because that, that, <laughs> that sauna cost you 35 euro. So <laughs> back it down. Yeah, what, a, what an awful constraint that would be. Well, then I well, think you'd really probably be forced into wood, wouldn't you, if, if electricity was high? Yeah, but you remember, right behind me is a river. I mean, this Norway's filled with these things, and they're they're generating electricity all the time mm. to the dam. So, you know that. But there's also a forest behind me too. So we have yeah. we have we have a lot of energy here, and there's well, oil in the forest. Yeah, you have a lot of energy resources with the oil and and money. I mean, you guys are doing great. I mean, you talk about a, a country that's got their act together fiscally, um, and even environmentally from that. I mean, I know I know there's a lot of irony to uh, you know, oil in the North Sea and stuff. But um, if yeah. there if there's a country that's, uh, you know, really, you, you know, you guys, it's Norway is really sensitive to the environment. And that's, that's something we all need, isn't it? Norwegians love nature, and they, they just really honor it. I know it is ironic that the wealth comes from the North Sea oil. But there's also, they've long been very much an energy producing company, country through the through the hydroelectric hydroelectric and also the forests they manage forests very yeah. well here yeah well good it's a pretty special place to be i, I actually yeah. love it well when i when i found out that you were on your way to norway i was ecstatic for you because I, I i you know we've been in touch and stuff and I, I knew about your leg and, and and you know san francisco hasn't been the greatest uh of cities uh, uh like minneapolis you know with the social unrest and stuff and i was just ah oh. I was so happy for you to know that you, you got on a plane heroically and got, got to your homeland. Uh, super happy for you. Well, I, I thank you, thank you. It was a challenge to get here. They, they, the planes weren't flying and my leg was broken. And, but I, I, I just wanna kind of dial it back a little bit on San Francisco as a city I love. We managed, I think we managed in that city, we managed the virus we are continuing to manage the virus as good or better than a lot of places. Uh, really, it really shut down before anybody else. Um, I think the AIDS crisis really did was mm -hmm. like a warm up. Mm -hmm. And I've really, really been pained to see what's going on in Minneapolis and say, you know, with, in your neck of the woods. That, that just, it just is torn in my heart because that's yeah. just such a special place and mm -hmm. the people are so wonderful there and to see all yeah. that violence is i know man i know you know it's walk. yeah you know it's sort of like uh <clears throat> another we you and i always kind of reaching for metaphors and i i have to bring this one into the fold it's like our uh our social fields have been allowed to lie fallow and yet you know i can feel some really beautiful budding um fruit, you know, some fruit trees growing here. And what, what I'm going with this metaphor is you and I have had this discussion about you coming to Minneapolis and how we would just love to, to host you, you know, and love to have you come to town. And, and, and so we're going to keep nurturing this thought, uh, this intention. And, you know, there'll be a day where this is, you know, travel's going to be great again and safe again. And uh, we're going to come out of this really rocking. And uh, I, I just am really excited to hang out with you and, and take some free form sauna together. Glenn, I just I got to rift off that too because I think you're absolutely right. This is going to pass. 
it will pass. We, and I think what will come out of it is maybe, hopefully in America, people will start seeing what we're doing and what we've learned to do uh, is not something as, a, as luxurious or some kind of a privilege, but it's essential. Mm -hmm. It's a public health issue that people mm -hmm. take care of themselves and take yeah. care of their bodies. And, right. and, and we know we have, we're, we're sitting on the gold mine here and we're just trying to, we're trying to let other people know that. And it's, right. it's frustrating, frankly, especially in America, because people just don't, they don't get it. And, and it's been really frustrating. Uh, thank you. I know. I hope, I hope now, Hope now when people start seeing that, you know, like we talked about earlier, that health is, is really what is so important in these times when, when, when there's a virus is like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be enough just to have, uh, have a vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, it, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be one thing, but for sure, staying healthy is, is, is going to be way right on. top. Yeah. Right, right, right on. Now, now you've provoked me. I, you've poked the bear, and I, I have to ask: uh, What is the expression um, that you shared with Risto, uh, the president of the International Sauna Association, about saunas in America as a percent? Oh, Come on, scary. let's just lay it out here. Do, no, do you know where no, I'm going? I, I don't. I don't even. I, you know, uh, in America, uh, X percent of the saunas are bad. Remember that one? Do, oh, are you yeah, comfortable well, with it? Yeah, yeah, I'm comfortable. Although you guys are doing a lot in Minneapolis to change well, those well, let's, numbers. Well, let's state the, in fairness, um, you know, you know what I'm asking you to recite, right? The expression. I think it's something about, about you know, the ones that are here are pretty bad. I don't remember what I okay. said. Okay, I think, what, well, Risto told me this uh, when we were at the Finnish Sauna Society. <laughs> we, we, your, your name came up in great light, of course. And, <laughs> and, and I think the line as it goes, and please correct me, and, and the context of the line was maybe uh, the, this line that you said was probably 20 years ago, and, and you said, oh, yeah, in America, 80% of the saunas are bad, and the other 20% are worse. Yeah, I think I said that. <laughs> but, but it's getting better, Glenn. Come I on. Know, man. You, know, you guys are doing a lot. I, I love what you're doing out there. I can't tell you how it just warms my heart. I just love you guys. I love you so much. Right on, man. And, uh, I'm just, you're, it's gonna, you're spreading all the stuff, you, the good stuff you're doing there is 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 spreading all around, and, yeah. and you just guys yeah. keep it up, keep Thanks. it up. You're Thanks, man. But, but, you know, just to drill into that, and again, you you've poked the bear, and I just want to say that like, what's been so frustrating for me in America is that what people think of as sauna is is anything but, and you know, it, the the as one climbs the ladder to good sauna, I mean, the the bottom rungs are are just terrible, uh, and. Uh, you know, whether it's a public, you know, YMCA, quote unquote, sauna with really stale air and don't throw water on the rocks and mm -hmm. someone in there with all their gym gear, you know, doing doing push ups on the low bench and just a <laughs> terrible public vibe. And then even in the in the private world, these these really lame ass toaster oven saunas like wedged into some closet, you know, off a of, off a of, off a living room with, again, no ventilation and no thermal mass, no heat. And I'm just like pulling my hair out because like yourself to experience really good heat uh, in, in, in the country of origin and then, and then to experience that and not just the mechanics of the good heat, but the culture that comes with it and the goodness of, you know, leaving the cell phone in the locker room or, or leaving all that behind and in and, and the non rigidity of it. I mean, as I came back to America as a young college student and brought, and I brought that passion with me and to see this bastardization of good sauna uh, and, and the proliferation of bad sauna, I, I just, you know, I, I just want to get on top of a mountain and scream. <laughs> so, so and you're again, doing it. I and am. It. I started great. sauna times with that, with that, with that kind of, um, you know, gun to the back of my head. It's like do something positive. And so I continue to wave the flag of, of good heat and what good sauna really is and the cultural elements behind it. So you poked the bear, you got me all fired up with that. And, uh, and, and I have to credit you with that line. It, would, it, it meant so much to me to know that I'm not alone, you know, uh, for you to make that observation. Um, and it was just, it went so in such a beautiful way too, with humor behind it. Uh, I want to thank you for it because you've been a okay, great influence okay. well, for me. Let's Michelle. make sure we change this. So I, I never have to say that again. <laughs> no, well, we are. We are one sound at a time, and and oh, we, we will, <laughs> yeah, and we'll date. We, you know, in fairness, that that expression needs to be date stamped because it it really was a provocation to do this to make better. I always I 
often will draw the craft brewing analogy and we're making better beer now you know we 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 know what craft beer tastes like and you know the quality and made it from the heart um you know as art you know good sauna is art much like making a good beer for you know uh in this craft brewing revolution and it's something that's ready and ripe uh the time is now and uh, it's just exciting to be part of it that's great that's so and you're good. you're you're the mentor Oh, you've been a so, mentor. You're so kind. You're so yeah. kind. Thank you. I, I right. really, I so much enjoy talking to you and all the guys out there, the Six Twelve Society, yeah. everybody. It's, right on. Uh, it's really, a, it's a, it's a cool place to be. Yes, it is, brother. So, any final words to listeners of Sauna Talk? I asked all, all these sort of common questions on our first Sauna Talk episode about, you know, if you could bring a mobile sauna anywhere and. You know, uh, if you could sauna with anybody and, and this and that, these, are, these, these questions do not need to be asked to you again, because those questions are to bring out the, um, the, the spirit of sauna, the, the sanctity of, of what you and I love. So, so do you want to share any final word to listeners of Sauna Talk about, um, uh, about sauna or your life or any, anything come to mind? Any final words? The only thing now is that since we can't film... Um, I'm enjoying the saunas, <laughs> just taking my time. I'm also working on a new book, finally. Uh, and it's going it, to, it'll be a sequel to Sweat. But it won't be Sweat. It'll be, um, I think, beautifully designed, beautifully illustrated. And it'll, it'll draw on all of my new experiences and new knowledge from the last three year traveling uh, for Perfect Sweat. And um, I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be my way of expressing a lot of my personal feelings that I didn't, I probably was too young to really do that in sweat. So I'm excited about that. And also just reminding people that, you know, this too shall pass. We, these moment, these hard times we're in now will pass and we will be meeting again in the sauna it will happen it's 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 just it's just a matter of time and in the meanwhile you know there's other things to be done lovely yeah. Mikhail, thank you for your your what you're doing you know i feel so close to you you know thanks to technology we're able to share this and uh, i i feel i'm with you in spirit so we will have a virtual sauna together today uh and and i'm thinking of you brother it's really wonderful to visit thanks so much glenn Take care, Mikhail. Yeah. Hey, Glenn, hold on one second, okay? Okay.